Hi everyone, this is Renee from Metal Arc Mystic and I'm doing a video on decks that surprised me um, and also decks that I think offer a unique way of looking at uh, some of the minors that I particularly appreciate. So one of the things that I've found as my um, tarot journey has progressed is that I, um, there are some I'm trying to see if I can get the light better for these crystals, but I think that's just making it worse. Um, some of the ways that the Rider Waite Smith um, depicts some of the cards is a little bit, it's not problematic, but um, I find it constraining. So, one of the cards um, in particular that, you know, I wish were a little more expansive is the um, Three of Swords. And so when I look to buy new decks now, I look for decks that um, don't follow the Rider Waite Smith as closely um, as they might, or as closely as a lot of other decks do. So um, I thought I would share three decks with you. The first one is the Good Tarot. And when I first, I don't know why this is. When I first saw this deck, um, I think I mentioned I did not want it. Um, I, I thought it was beautiful, like, you know, this card is beautiful, but I didn't, I, I was like, no, definitely not for me. There were just some, um, some ways that things were uh, presented, specifically the strength card and the lover's card. They were just too similar, and so I, I was like, no thanks. But then I got, um, you know, I, I saw it some more places, and... It started to grow on me, and actually when I was considering getting the Mystical Shaman, um, and then I decided not to get that deck, that's what brought me back to the Good Tarot. So I wanted to just go over some um, of the cards that I particularly appreciate in this deck. Uh, this is the Page of Fire, and one of the things I really like about this is there's a real sense of mystical, but also... Um, you know, mystical, magical inspiration that I really like um, when you're dealing with the wands or, or fire. And so I thought this was a really well done card. Um, this is a really good example. The Nine of Air is usually, or the Nine of Swords is usually such a card of, um, you know, nightmares. Um, but what I like about this depiction of it is you can see that she is kind of orchestrating the way that the the birds are flying or at least that's how I perceive it and um, you know her eyes are almost closed uh, and so I really like this sense of her being in control and it also almost looks like she's about to take flight herself so the nines are usually about something is almost completed like it's coming it's coming to the point of no return and also the maximum energy. So I really like that. Um, the Seven of Fire. I like how this, there's a sense of strength and determination in this, um, in this unicorn. Um, and there's a little like the embers all around. I really like that. The Tower. What I like about this tower is it looks it's like the tower right before the lightning strike. And I know that the tower is about, you know, shocking change and new perspectives, but I, I kind of like how this is the stillness right before the storm. There's a real sense of um, celebration in this card that I really appreciate. Um, I really like how the artist echoed that kind of line of sticks in the... Um, the eight of fire and how it's kind of like they've landed and they're and they're manifesting eight of wands I said eight of sticks what I like about this is there's a sense of real solidity in this ten of earth or ten of pentacles and she's got her box of you know treasures right here and so for me the question is where do you move forward after you have this sense of like connection and completion with the earth or heritage so I really liked that I don't know if I'm going to go over all these because I have 
I, I really like this uh, Ten of Air. This is the Ten of Swords, which is, you know, the, the person lying on the ground, super dead. Because this person is blowing as though she's blowing wishes into the air. And although her wings are down, I really get the sense that she has not lost hope. And so I really like that um, about this Ten of Swords. And then I'll just do this one. The Five of Swords in this deck, or the Five of Air, she's on her tippy toes on this, you know, high wire. And she's wearing a mask. And she's holding this kind of, um, some kind of measurement. And so for me, this Five of Swords is kind of asking, like, what are your intentions um, as you, you, you go from, you know, from over here to over here, you know, are you just dancing or are you trying to balance something that maybe shouldn't be balanced? And it looks like she's beginning to form feathers. So maybe she's going to take flight at some point. So for me, the fives are, um, about change. And so, I mean, she can't stay here forever. She's got to, you know, fly away, move forward, move backwards. And so I think that the, um, and the birds seem to kind of be communicating that to her. So that's the good tarot. And I was uh, really surprised at how much I enjoyed the minors of this deck. The next tarot deck that I was surprised by, and um, a surprise and also that's the reason I got it, um, and that's the Connolly tarot. I've been having a little love affair with the Connolly tarot, and I just wanted to go over some of my favorite cards. So... Like I said, the Three of Swords is um, is kind of like my litmus test now for decks. And if the Three of Swords is presented in a different way than the heart being stabbed, um, then I'll take a closer look at the deck. So this is Three Swords, two going down, one going up. The one going up is um, pointing to or, or next to the, the White Rose. And I really like that because even though things look dark so you have these dark clouds and you've got a lot of movement downwards pulling things down you do have this ray of hope in the white rose so I really like that I thought this was a really interesting depiction of the seven of swords so to my mind there's there's lots of things going on but the seven is the sevens are always about magic and mystery and sometimes when that's not presented well or it's not people aren't being honest, it can be about deception, right? But this is also about, you know, what is, what is this person playing? Like what's it's, it seems almost like this is a song leading them away. And this person is, is contemplating, you know, should I follow? But what about those two left behind? And so I thought it was a really interesting way of depicting the, um, the seven. I like how this three of wands shows the boat coming in. So although often, you know, it's the person standing with the three wands and they're looking out at the ocean. But in this card, the, the boat has come and, and this person is bringing news in the form of this wand that they're offering. And so what is this energetic partnership going to entail? So I really like that. I should probably put these, oops, I got them all mixed up now. I should probably put them face down. Um, I like how the Nine of Pentacles, she's inside looking out at her garden and, and wondering about things. The swords are off, often the, the cards that I look at closely. So this is the Five of Swords, and this one is often about victory but at great cost. You know, victory but really did you win. And what I find interesting about this is the figure who's kneeling and has his hands together he is, he looks like these swords, so these would be four swords, like uh, stability and thinking, are almost binding him. So it's kind of like his thought process is binding him. And he looks like he's asking this person for help. This person has a sword that looks like a sword of clarity. So in this case, it's the stability of the fours being disrupted by this new idea of the fives and I really really like that of course I adore this ten of swords because it shows her almost being resurrected from whatever the tens represented something is passing away and she is starting fresh so I really love that I like this eight of cups because this person 
It's almost like the Eight of Cups before the person leaves or when the person has found what they were going towards. So they look like some kind of inspiration has happened and they're praying. I really like that for the eights. I really like this uh, Ten of Wands that instead of the person stumbling or barely being able to, to hold all the wands, he's planting something. So this might be done and you can see that it's autumn so the leaves are falling, but he's planting something, something new. I really like that. I really like this Eight of uh, Swords as well. The person is, you know, they, they drew the person large in a small space with these, um, this window pane, kind of this sense of being trapped. And the swords are down in the snow. So there's a feeling of uh, no movement, uh, very much being like housebound. Or, or in this case, bound by your thoughts. So I really like that one. What I appreciated about this four of um, pentacles is he looks like he's moving or dancing. So instead of like hoarding or holding on very tightly and being stuck, it looks as though he's decided he's going to move away to a new place with his resources. And so I like that about that four. The... <laughs> This two of swords, he's contemplating these two, like which one do I choose? And this person kind of represents a, to my mind, a jester of some kind, or maybe, oops, maybe <laughs> encouraging him to, um, you know, with the, the bang of the drum to, to make his decision faster. And with the five of pentacles, often there's a sense of hardship or you're like the outsider looking in. And I like how you know, she's lightly touching these resources that she's not, she hasn't seen before and the cherub is about to remove her blindfold. So there's going to be a change in those finances. Okay, so that was the Connolly Tarot and I enjoy many of the minors in this deck. I'm just concentrating on minors because majors are a little bit easier for me to get around actually. Um, the, the last one I wanted to talk about, I've talked about a couple times on my channel, and that's the Chinese tarot. I really, um, I really just appreciate, I'll probably go a little bit faster with this one. I really just appreciate how the minors are depicted um, in a new way. So, you know, the Seven of Swords, this is kind of like, who is on your side? It's difficult to tell in this picture who is on whose side, you know, and, and who can you trust? So I like that. What I find interesting about this deck, and I think it's indicative of like deeper cultural um, values, that like this Two of Cups, which is often depicted as two people, lovers, communing together, is, um, is a person communing with the moon. I really love that. I love how it goes beyond the traditional sense of just um, lovers. Um, this two of staves, you know, often it's depicted as the, the person standing on the, um, I don't know if it's a parapet, but anyway, kind of like a balcony looking out and they're holding the globe. But this is two elderly people who are kind of, in my, to my mind, surveying what they have done with their lives, um, looking out over their family and their, maybe their farm. And I really like that. And the choice for the twos is, you know, where to move forward from there. I love how the five of wands is are these old men who are not fighting, but looks like they're discussing something and the dark, um, you know, the darkness seems to be coming and they're trying to figure out what to do about it. I think it's super interesting how this guy is, his head is inside the coins. Like he thinks that it's awesome. Uh, you know, he's got a super happy face. It's awesome that he has so many resources, but they're kind of starting to trap him. Five of Cups, this person doesn't seem to realize their surroundings. They're just kind of focusing on that. Instead of focusing on their sadness, they're just focusing on this one cup. Um, I love this Three of Swords. You know, this sword came out of somewhere, came from someone, and she's blocking it. And so to me, this is like, how are you going to be creative uh, mentally in the face of this, um, this hardship? Same thing with this Nine of Swords. Um, this person is 
she's con in control. She's like, it's a lot of energy and she is handling it. Um, I found this interesting because it, this is a 10 of cups and usually that's like the, the happy family. But for me, what this speaks to is that when you have this much emotion, you know, 10 cups, it takes real finesse and effort and even mastery to be able to balance and in this case, juggle all of those. So I liked that. I just love this 10 because it's it's coming to an end. He's manifesting this and throwing them out and they're gonna do what they're gonna do, but he seems pretty confident. <laughs> Five of swords, like where did these, where did they come from? What was the intention? I really like how he has to take aim at this partnership or this new endeavor um, and he has to be very precise with it. So in this deck, the two of coins uh, is depicted more traditionally like the lovers as the two of cups often is. And I find that really interesting. Um, you know, the pentacles or coins representing resources, but also representing family, ancestors behind and, you know, progeny forward. And then the last, this is a majors card. I really like how these two represent the devil and one is even holding chains. Um, and they're kind of like, uh, a more animal nature, but not in in the always positive way, kind of in the non-thinking way. And so I appreciate that about this deck. So that was the Chinese tarot. So those are just three decks that I really appreciate how the miners are depicted in a way that is not um, Rider Waite Smith. And they give me a lot more um, ability to be creative and open in my uh, readings. So... I hope you are doing well, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.